Welcome to General Chemistry Mini Lecture Series, Lecture 41, Lewis Bonding Theory and Lewis Structures. Lewis Bonding Theory can be used to explain covalent and ionic bonding. Vesper stands for Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion Theory and Valence Bond VB Theory. Vesper and VB are complementary theories in describing chemical bonding. Vesper theory can be used to predict molecular geometry, but it does not give details about orbitals and not indicate the types of bonds present between atoms. However, Valence bond theory does the opposite. Although the VB theory does not give the molecular geometry, it does give details about orbitals and it can indicate the types of bonds present between atoms. Therefore, we'll need both Vesper and VB theories in discussing chemical bonding. Another type of theory is the molecular orbital theory, MO. We apply the Schrodinger wave equation in molecular orbital theory to view atoms on a quantum mechanical level. When atomic wave functions completely overlap each other, a bonding molecular orbital is formed. On the other hand, if atomic wave functions cancel each other, then anti-bonding molecular orbitals are formed. Lewis bonding theory explains how and why atoms form molecules and why some combination of those atoms are more stable than others. Again, one can use Lewis bonding theory to predict the shapes of molecules to predict molecular geometry as well as the chemical and physical properties of compounds. Lewis theory focuses on the valence electrons. Why? Because the outer electrons are furthest from the nucleus and are the ones that are most exposed to other atoms when bonds form. That's why when we study chemical bonding, we need to focus on the valence electrons. Let's take a look at Lewis electron dot symbol. As you know, for main group elements, the group number is the same as the number of valence electrons. For group 3A elements, they should have three valence electrons. Group 7A, seven valence electrons. When writing the Lewis electron dot symbol, you need to place one dot per valence electron on each of the four sides of the element symbol, and then pair the electrons if necessary until all of the valence electrons are assigned. Let's work on example one in lecture 41. Write the Lewis electron dot symbol for nitrogen atom. First, we need to find out where can nitrogen be found in a periodic table? That's group 5A. Therefore, we know there are five valence electrons. We write down the element symbol first, then place one dot on each of the four sides first. So far, four electrons are used. The fifth one, you can use that to pair one of those 
for electrons. For example, this is a correct Lewis electron dot symbol for nitrogen atom. So is this one. That pair of electrons can be on any side of the elements. All four are correct Lewis electron dot symbols for nitrogen. In this slide, we focus on period two and period three elements. Those are group 1A, lithium, sodium, just one dot. Group 2A, they have two valence electrons, two dots. They do the same, 3A, 4A, five dots. We just work on nitrogen, six dots, seven, and eight dots. Those are the noble gases. And since they have eight electrons, that's called actually octet. This is a very useful illustration. Boron is group 3A, carbon group 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A, and then the group A number equals the number of valence electron. Boron has uh, three valence electrons. Each of its uh, three valence electrons can pair with an electron from other atoms, then forming three chemical bonds. Carbon has four valence electrons, therefore four single bonds can be formed. However, if boron gain one electron, then forming boride and ion, boride now has four valence electrons, and that's why it, form, it can form four bonds. Similarly, carbon, carbon atom, four valence electrons, then it can form four single bonds. But if carbon loses one electron, then you can see this uh, C plus ion, then it only has three valence electrons now. And that's why it can form three single bonds. If carbon atom gains one electron, a C minus an ion is formed. So therefore, it should have five valence electrons. Five valence electrons, obviously, there must be one lone pair valence electron. That leaves only three valence electrons can be used to form single bonds. For fluorine atom, group 7A, then seven valence electrons, so that's a six, the seventh one here can pair with an electron from another element, forming this a single bond. If a fluorine loses one electron, it only has six valence electron remaining. Then four of those six are lone pair electron. So therefore two valence electrons are available to be used to form chemical bonds. If fluorine gains one electron, it will have eight valence electrons. Then no covalent bond can be formed. Please note, hydrogen and fluorine form single bonds and are always surrounding atoms. I already explained that carbon forms four bonds, nitrogen mostly form three bonds, and sometimes four bonds if nitrogen loses one electron. Oxygen normally forms two bonds, but if oxygen 
Fans one electron, only one single bond can be formed. If oxygen loses one electron, three bonds can be formed. For halogens, except fluorine, if they are surrounding atoms, they form a single bond. But if they are central atoms, multiple bonds can be formed. In this slide, I'm going to go over steps in converting a molecular structure into a loose structure. First, we'll write down the molecular formula. Then step number one, find out the sum of valence electrons. Step number two, place atoms. I want to make sure place atom with lowest electron negativity in center. Step number three, draw single bonds. And note that each single bond contains two electrons. Number four, place remaining electrons around the surrounding atoms. And we want to make sure for most elements, they have to have eight valence electrons surrounding them. But for hydrogen, it can only accommodate two electrons. Step five, if there are still electrons left, you want to place the remaining electrons around the central, the central atom now, or convert lone pairs into multiple bonds. Some atoms may have more than eight valence electrons. Each double bond contains four electrons, and each triple bond contains six electrons. Now let's uh, use one example to digest the steps we just uh, went over in the previous slide. First, write down the molecular formula, Pf3. Step number one, find out the sum of valence electrons. That should be easy. Phosphorus, group 5A, five electrons. Fluorine, group 7A, seven valence electrons. Five for phosphorus, seven for fluorine, but there are three fluorine. Total of 20, a total of 26 valence electrons. That's the sum of valence electrons in phosphorus trifluoride. Step number two, we'll place phosphorus in the center. Step number three, we'll draw single bonds. Now let's find out how many valence electrons still remaining. A total of 26, subtracted by three single bonds, six electrons, so therefore, there are 20 valence electrons remaining. Number four, place remaining electrons around surrounding atoms, not central atoms, at least not for now. Each flooring can accommodate eight electrons. There are already two electrons in this single bond, therefore should be three lone pairs. Do the same for the other two fluorine atoms. Now let's take a look at the number of electrons, of valence electrons again. 20 electrons remaining, a total of 18 electrons are just assigned as lone pair electrons. Therefore, still two electrons left unassigned. What do we do? will place the remaining electrons around the central atom. The central atom is phosphorus. And now we assign a lone pair to the central atom, phosphorus. If you count the number of electrons surrounding phosphorus, one lone pair, three single one, that's a total of eight. So therefore, all four 
atoms in phosphorus trifluoride meet the octet rule. This is the correct Lewis structure for phosphorus trifluoride. Now we'll work on another example, nitrate. So we'll follow the same steps. That's the ion formula, the number, the sum of valence electrons, five valence electrons for nitrogen, and there's just one nitrogen. Then for oxygen, group 6A, six valence electrons, but there are three oxygen. Now don't forget this uh, minus sign. That means one more electron. That's why I add one more electron here. That's a total of 24 electrons. Place items. Don't forget to show that this is an ion. Draw single bonds, three single bonds, and there are 18 electrons left. So we want to place remaining electrons around the surrounding atoms. Each surrounding oxygen atom get three lone pairs that makes the total number of valence electrons surrounding each oxygen atom, that's eight. Are there any electrons left? No. So then this is the Lewis structure for nitrate. Now let's work on ethylene. In this case, there are more than one central atoms. Write down the formula, find out the total number of valence electrons, that's 12, and do the atom placement, draw single bonds, Total of 12 electrons subtracted by the number of electrons already assigned, five single bonds, total of 10 electrons. So there are still two electrons remaining. What do we do? Place remaining electrons around the surrounding atoms. But in this case, the surrounding atoms are hydrogen, and hydrogen can have only maximum two electrons. So therefore, this step does not apply here. Now we have to place the remaining electrons around the central atom. But now take a look at those two central atoms. The left one, total of eight electrons. That meets the octet. But the right one, it does not meet the octet, only six. So therefore, this is not the correct Lewis structure for ethylene. Instead, you see, we convert this lone pair into multiple bonds. And now, take a look at the number of uh, electrons surrounding the left carbon, eight, and the right carbon, eight. This structure is much heavier than that structure. So therefore, this is the correct Lewis structure for ethylene molecule. You already know two atoms share one pair of electrons, like fluorine, F2 molecule. So when the two atoms approach to each other, then those two valence electrons can be shared by both fluorine atoms. And then that shared pair of electrons becomes a single bond. One atom may have more than one single bond. Like in this case, you have oxygen atom in the middle, and now two hydrogen atoms approaches to this uh, oxygen atom from both sides. So then there are two pairs of electrons are shared between hydrogen and oxygen 
atoms. That's why you see two single bonds. So for one atom, can have more than one single bond. When two atoms share two pairs of electrons, then double bond is formed. So here shows those two oxygen atoms, when they come close to each other, four electrons can be shared by both oxygen atoms. A double bond is formed. Please note that one atom may have two double bonds, like in carbon dioxide. Triple bonds, six valence electrons are shared by two atoms, like in nitrogen molecule N2, six electrons are shared. Triple bond is formed. Let's take a look at the Lewis symbols for ions. Because metals, as well as hydrogen, lose all of their valence electrons to form cations, then cations have Lewis symbols without valence electrons. For example, this is the Lewis symbol for lithium atom. However, here you don't see any dots for lithium ion because there are no valence electrons for lithium ion. Aluminum atom, three valence electrons. Aluminum ion, zero. Since nonmetals gain electrons to form anions, the anions have Lewis symbols with more valence electrons. Fluorine, seven valence electrons, gaining one electron. Fluorine becomes fluoride, then eight valence electrons, and that is an octet. When metals like potassium and calcium lose electrons, lose their valence electrons, tight ions are formed. And those tight ions get the same electron configuration as as their previous noble gases. Argon is the previous noble gas for potassium and calcium. So you can see potassium, calcium, they are previous, which means one period up, then the previous noble gas is argon. Argon. For nonmetals, they can gain electrons to become an ions, and those an ions get the same electron configuration as the next noble gas. For example, sulfur gains two electrons, sulfide is formed. Chlorine gains one electron, it becomes chloride. Both sulfide and chloride they have electron configuration as their next noble gas. The next noble gas for sulfur and chlorine, that's also argon in this case. So therefore, all of those cations and anions in this table, they have noble gas electron configuration. Or in other words, they have the octet electron configuration. As we already learned previously, the noble gases are very stable, so therefore those ions are more stable than their atoms. Now let's take a look at the uh, Lewis structures for ionic compounds. For example, when lithium reacting with uh, fluorine, lithium loses its single valence electron to fluorine, and then lithium positive cation and fluoride anion are formed. So that's a lithium fluoride ionic compound. But now note here that electrons are transferred until the metal loses all its 
valence electrons, and the nonmetals has an octet. Therefore, you have to adjust the number of atoms so the electron transfer comes out even. Let's use a lithium oxide as one example. Lithium has one valence electron, and that is transferred to oxygen atom. Oxygen's number of valence electrons is increased from 6, that's 2, 4, 5, 6, to 7, that's this one. 7, that's not a stable electron configuration. That's not octet. So therefore, we need to give another lithium valence electron to the same oxygen atom. This way, two lithium ion and one oxide ion, ion can be formed. Lithium oxide, another ionic compound. That's it for lecture 41. If this video is helpful, please subscribe and recommend to other people who are also studying chemistry. I will see you guys in lecture 42, Lattice Energy and Born Harbor Cycle.